How did you get your reputation as an enfant terrible? An enfant terrible. Maybe it's not well deserved. Maybe it is well deserved. How did I get my reputation? By going against the grain. People get used to a comfortable level of things. You know, to do something, even if it's not new, it just simply wasn't there before. It's a blank piece of land, a tabula rasa, a clean slate. You build a building, it goes against the grain. So, lots of architects I've always gone buildings. against the grain. Yeah, lots of architects don't go against the grain. But I've always, since I was a little kid, because my parents were real poor and they, my, you know, you always rebel against your parents and my parents wanted to be rich. And so I went against what they wanted to be, you know, because kids always do that. So I wanted to do something, so I read The Fountainhead when I was a little kid. I didn't like things the way they were. I don't even like architecture in a certain way, the way it is. But I've always modeled myself. I always, the people I admire are the heroes in architecture, the Mies van der Rohe's, the Louis Sullivan's, namely the failures, people who failed, who, who, who later architects, who acolytes were unable to emulate and to carry forward the language only to use the person's work. It was usury. I always admired the people that uh, lit fires and were hung for it and so forth. Because I think that's how society and culture slowly schleps ahead. And I think it's important that culture does that. And so somebody has to take the heat for that. And of course they fail. A part of courage or heroism is being a bit of a failure. And of course I am a massive failure. How can you say that? I flunked out of MIT. I've been, this is my third marriage. Um, there's an immense number of failure sectors of my life, components of it, without question. And as an architect, I can't quite get it right. Architecture is hell. It's really hard. I never get it right, and I never, I hate when buildings are done that I've designed that I go back and look at them, because then it always looks awful. It always looks like, because time has passed, and I realize, Jesus, I could have done it this other way. You know, when you concretize something, when you make it physical, when you actualize it, you, of course, continue to change. It doesn't. And it represents you at a certain point in your life or a certain point in your head. When you, in conjunction with a client and situations and theories and actualities, that then you modify later, always, if you're alive. That's why I resent the architects that don't change, because they're basically humanoids. They're not alive. And they just continue and they do signature work and it's a style. <coughs> so I'm trying to keep it fresh. I'm trying to stay young and of course that's a losing battle. I mean, it's not just in what you see in this body that's crumbling. But in my head, you know, I'm losing. I mean, so I, I consider myself a, in a certain way a kind of a failure. Sure. No question. When you think about and I'm also an outsider. I never felt, even though I was born here, I don't consider this my home because I've never been made to feel at home here, by the way. You mean in the United States? In Chicago, okay? Because of its innate anti-intellectualism. And of course, I talk too much, and perhaps even have the conceit of thinking too much. So institutions shall remain nameless, go out of their way to let me know or let others know that I'm really not at home here, actually. So I'm always a little on edge. Now. That's what art is all about. Art is always try to find ways to stay on edge, to be uneasy with themselves, their place, their situation, the context, and so forth. And of course, I suppose that's all to the good. It's those that don't do that that I think get in trouble and just start clipping coupons on their work. So you understand where I'm coming from in this?